Oh, hello. This is Tom from anti-proton.com. I wanted to talk to you today about the speed of light. C. Letter C is usually used to uh, signify the speed of light in uh, science. <clears throat> The speed of light has been a cornerstone of physics for, what, a hundred years now? Basically put, C is so important to physics, it could be considered uh, one of the perhaps top five constants of all of physics. Uh, the most simplest example would be the mass-energy equivalence. It's one of the only formulas that most people know. It's unfortunate you'd hope people would know more, but uh, no more formulas, but Everyone knows E equals mc squared, right? Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, the speed of light in a vacuum. Basically put, without the speed of light being the governing speed limit of the universe, without anything funky going on, of course, without that, all of our understanding of physics pretty much needs to be changed. Everything from the complex Schrodinger equation, which is used to understand the way computers work and the way particle, uh, particles, but atoms, combine together to produce uh, chemicals, and just about every other conceivable uh, uh, waveform, matter wave type uh, um, uh, formula. Everything from there all the way to like uh, time dilation, Lorentz contractions, uh, uh, inertial frames moving past one another. Uh, the timing on satellites as they go around the Earth, all these sorts of things are based on this one constant, the speed of light in a vacuum. If that has been breached, if that has been broken, violated, it would utterly undermine physics in the most beautiful of a way. But let me first stop, though, and state it has not been proven that it's happened yet, although we're really sure, but it's not proven yet technically, we don't know yet. Here are the three most probable outcomes, well not outcomes, excuse me, the three most prob probable states that are going on currently. There could be more, but these are the three most probable. probable probability state one, they're wrong. Something's gone wrong. They've gotten their math, their calculations wrong. This is incredibly unlikely. We're talking about some of the smartest people in the world all gathered together looking at this. People who quite frankly, you know how scientists are, they love, love to prove each other wrong. And for a scientist to stand up and say they've broken the speed of light, it's almost like throwing blood in the water. The other physicists would be tearing them to shreds, and yet nobody's been able to explain it yet. Nobody. So it's probably not likely that they're wrong. But they could be. That is one state. And if they are wrong, this will be a sensational story. And it will bulletproof E equals mc squared, as well as special and general relativity and a whole bunch of other things, including quantum mechanics. But let's look at probability state 2. They have broken the speed of light. This being the case, it potentially potentially could open up the ability for all massive particles, and when I say massive I don't mean big, I mean particles with mass, such as this marble or a proton or a neutron or whatnot, to go faster than the speed of light. If that were true, then we, human beings, could potentially go faster than the speed of light. Now, that's not to say that the slippery slope means that just because a particle can do it, a large person could do it, but the point is, the potential would then be there. No longer would there be this rule that says you can't do it. You might be able to do it. Faster than light communications, the ability to send a space probe to another planet and instantaneously communicate with it, even though it's billions of light years, well, billions of light years, billions of miles away, a couple light years away, you know, two or three parsec away or whatnot. These things all could come into reality. In fact, some weirder things could happen, such as causality loops. Cause could precede effect. The effect of this dropping could be known before I dropped it. Once that happens, the possibility of uh, paradoxes starts coming into effect. <clears throat> what if you developed a device that sent a signal back in time if something hit it. That signal goes back in time and activates a device that prevents it from being hit by something. Anyway, it's a little complicated. Um, the point of a causality loop, basically, would, the simplest way would be to say, what if you went back in time and killed your own grandfather? I think I was trying to see, speak more of a realistic, uh, practical application of that. But anyhow, um, 
If you could go back in time and kill your own grandfather, then you could not live and exist to go back in time and kill your own grandfather, which means that they would live, which means that you could then go back in time, which means that they wouldn't live, which means that you couldn't go back in time, which means they would live. It goes into a loop. All kinds of horrible crap happens. Quantum realities could start breaking apart and everything like that. Well, not that nothing would happen to us, but I'm saying the potential for understanding that these things already exist and now we can do something with them would exist. It's absolutely just phenomenal. It's ridiculous. Probability state three. It's true, but you can't go faster than the speed of light. Not directly, not like just going faster than the speed of light. But instead, there's a trick. Perhaps those pesky little neutrinos are finding some method of getting there. Perhaps they move in and out of our, uh, vibrate in and out of our dimension for some short period of time. It perhaps, perhaps they are fourth dimensional constructs that only seem to exist in our third dimensional reality. They are, um, uh, um, uh, sort of like three dimensional manifolds of, or of some degree like that. How do I put this? I'm trying to think of a way to explain this in a non-scientific way. They might jump in and out of our reality, and in their reality, they might be going faster. How's that for a simple way to put it? Um, for you science folks, I'm talking about a, a fourth dimensional object that's manifolding to a third dimensional object, and then in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in and out, with uh, different, uh, um, uh, uh, diff different um, uh, inertial frames. For non-science people, I'm talking about like it disappears here and reappears here instantly. In this, this time, this space was never moved, traveled. The point being is if we have some kind of wormhole thing going on, or some kind of uh, 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 jumping into another dimension, uh, any one of the 11, 10 possible dimensions, depending on which theory you subscribe to, what that opens up for us, think Stargate. Maybe not really. Again, that's that's you know jumping to the science fiction method of it. The reality is it will probably be some dumb little particle we can send through a hole, but the point is, still, the ability to uh, uh, breach the speed of light may exist. It may exist right then and there. Not directly, mind you, not like driving faster than the speed of light, but more like disappearing here and reappearing here faster than you could have gotten there through the speed of light. The um, simplest analogy that most people use is to take a piece of paper and say it takes X amount of time to go this distance. Let's say you can travel one inch per second. One, two, three, four, five, it would take you eight seconds to travel this paper at one inch per second. But if you could fold them and connect them, it's almost instantaneous. Yet for any stick figure living on the paper, they don't notice the fold. But that kind of thing. I'm sure you've heard this quoted like a million, million times in science uh, channels and things. So anyhow, these are the three possible, the three most probable states that have occurred. They're just absolutely beautiful. If E equals to BC squared has been broken. I mean, it's horrible. We'll all go cry in a corner somewhere. But think about it. Think what it means. Think beyond for just a second. Just the amazing probabilities that could occur. Think now about the fundamentals of physics. It just goes to prove what many of us have thought for a long time. Physics is an open book. And this is not to say that the that fringe theories are automatically in, and that everything we know of is wrong, and every conspiracy theory that ever existed must be true. Nothing like that. Nothing at all like that. But what it means is that our future, and the rules that govern us, may not be known yet. That means there's still unknowns left in the world. And you can say what you want to, but the quest for, for wanting to know the truth is fed by the unknown. And some of us are quite hungry. It's almost like a cold glass of water in a desert. But without the desert, that cold glass of water is just a regular glass of water. Not amazing, but in a desert, this is sweeter than the honeyest, uh, sweetest nectar. So, basically put, this gives us as a species something to strive for. Now, the biggest issue I want to bring up, besides getting all mushy, squishy, and, you know, cliche, is why the hell isn't anyone talking about this? Yeah, there's views and stuff, and I see people talking about it on YouTube and stuff, but this should be, like, the biggest story. And it's not. Why aren't science stories big? I mean, they're big to you. I know they're big to you because you're listening to me on this. Either that or you're really drunk or bored. But for most people, they're not big. Why don't we care about science? Why not? Why is it, un why is it uncaring? Why, why are people so unknowledgeable about science? And I don't mean to, to bash anybody in general. 
they, but it's not taught in school. I went to a, a standard American school, right? They taught that much science. Actually, they taught more science at my school than they did at most. For example, they offered a full year of geology. Yes, and in my geology class, we actually went out into a large area, a large mine area, with a little pickaxe and stuff. We hammered out pieces of uh, amethyst and other rocks like that. And then we'd have to sit down and know what they were. You know, this is silicon oxide with what's in, whatever you want in it. It was exposed to this, that, or the other. And that, that was important for us. We learned about cleavage patterns and Mohs hardness scale and all these sorts of things you don't normally learn in, in most science classes. But the point is, most schools don't teach that much and most people don't want to learn because they don't see the application of science. And that is one of the saddest things in the entire world. The other prob problem that I see is I see theology standing in the way of science when it doesn't need to. The concept that a scientist must be an atheist and that a, the a, 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 a religious person must completely steer away from it. That's another thing that annoys the hell out of me too. By the way, I'm not saying that these things are always the way they are. I'm just saying that these are some general trends I've noticed, which bothers me. You can be religious and scientific, and you can be a-religious and scientific as well. They're not exclusive of one another. Um, but regardless, that's kind of a little rant of mine over the annoyance that this isn't a prime st uh, uh, story. It's kind of like a neat little side story. This should be the biggest thing out there because all that you're doing, people that are playing their video games on computers, watching world wrestling and all the other stuff that people do, all of that is contingent upon science. And this is one of the greatest rules of science being underdone. But anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Tell me what you think. And I just hope soon we find out. We have a satellite raining down upon us right this moment. We've had meltdowns this year. Every conceivable thing that you could imagine has happened in 2011. So, you know, wow.